The time it takes three brands of caulk to fully dry is studied by a construction contractor. Six beads from each of the three brands are randomly placed in the same space in a bathroom. The time for each bead to dry is listed below, listed here. Use a 5% significance level to test the claim there is a difference between the drying times for the different brands of caulk and form an ANOVA table. So we're going to form an ANOVA table and solve the problem. So you look here, it says that the three brands are randomly placed in the same space in the bathroom. So it's a completely randomized design. You see the data has no other cross categorization, right? There are no row labels. So this is a one-way ANOVA problem. It's a completely randomized design experiment, and this is the data for the three treatments, the three brands of Cox in this case. And we're trying to see how long it takes for those brands to dry in this particular spot in the bathroom. Okay, so what we want to do at this point is to express the claim, the HO, and the HA for the problem. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so starting with the claim, the problem says use a 5% significance level to test the claim there's a difference between the drying times. So what we're saying is that at least one brand differs. Of course, differs significantly from the others, right? So I'll just dot, dot, dot the rest of that idea. All right, now the HO, the null hypothesis, and the alternative hypothesis are as follows. Since there are three brands of cock that are going to be involved in the study, we'll have the mean for A is equal to the mean for B is equal to the mean for C, right? And then we'll have HA being basically the same at this time, in this case, as the claim. So we're going to say that at least one brand differs significantly, right? So one brand differs from the rest in a significant fashion. All right, now at this point, we're going to do the data step. So remember the data step is to basically fill in the ANOVA table, right? So we're gonna fill in this ANOVA table. The ANOVA table has a source column. It has a degrees of freedom column. It has a sum of squares column. It has a mean squared column. And finally, it has an F column for the test statistic to be placed. All right, so let's draw the table. That way we can come back and fill it in. So remember, the sources are basically treatment and error when you're dealing with the completely randomized design, right? And then finally, we'll have a total row as well. All right, then from there, degrees of freedom column, the sum of squares column, the MS column, and the test stat F column here. All right, remember, we don't have to fill in these cells here, so we're just gonna X those out so we know we don't have to bother with them. And now let's go look at the data, and we'll kind of analyze the data and work with it so we can get the first two columns of the ANOVA table, and then we'll fill in the remaining three cells that we need afterwards by looking at the actual table at that moment. Okay, so let's work with our data now. The first thing we need to calculate is something called the correction factor. If you recall, the correction factor is essentially the sum of all the y values, in other words, all the values in your table, all the response variable sums, and then we're going to square that value and divide by n. So the sum of the y values can be obtained most quickly by summing up the column totals, since those totals include the sum of all the values in the column, if we just sum up the totals, we have the correction factor basically almost done. So 155.6 plus 132.4 plus 150.8. So add up all those values, that's equivalent to the sum of all the values in the data table. And from there, we're going to square that number. So 438.8 is going to get squared. And then we'll divide by the total number of values. And if you look carefully, you see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six values in each column. There are three columns, therefore, there are going to be here 18 different data values. So 438 squared divided by 18. When we do that, we end up with the answer 10696.96. Okay, so 10,696.96889. That is our correction factor for the problem. I'm gonna store that in the variable x in my calculator so I can use it later without having to type it all back in. All right, now, the 
there's my correction factor. The next step is to come up with the sum of squares total or the total sum of squares. In order to do that, we're going to need this quantity, which is basically going to be all the y values, all the response values squared, and then you add them up. So you're going to square every item in this data table and then sum them up. And when you're done with that, you'll subtract off the correction factor that we just calculated. Now I've given us this value to make our work easier. So it's the 10,772.4 minus the correction factor. All right, so let's see what that ends up giving us. So 10,772.4 minus our correction factor, and we get the answer 75.431 repeating. So 75.431 repeating. That is our sum of square or total, or the total sum of squares. All right, from there we're going to do the sum of squares for treatments. And that is a simple formula. It's going to be the treatment total for brand A squared over the number of values in that column plus the treatment total for brand B squared over the number of values in that column plus the treatment total for brand C squared over the number of values in that column minus the correction factor. All right, so for us that's going to be 155.6 squared over 6, right, plus 1 32.4 squared over 6 plus 150.8 squared over 6 minus the correction factor. And when we do all that, the sum of square for treatment is going to turn out to be, let's see. So we'll have 155.6 squared divided by 6 plus 132.4 squared divided by 6 plus 150.8 squared divided by 6. Hit enter and we get 10,746. So 10,746.96 minus the correction factor and our final answer for this calculation turns out to be 49.991 repeating. So 49.991 repeating. All right, so that's our sum of square for treatment. All right, so let me just identify those or highlight those so we can use them later and we can see them clearly. All right, now the next thing we have to calculate then is going to be the sum of square for error. The sum of square for error. If you recall, that's going to basically be the sum of square for total, or the total sum of squares, minus the sum of square that's attributable to the treatment effect. And when we're done with that, we'll have our answer. So we're going to have 75.431 repeating minus 49.991 repeating. And this will give us our solution for the sum of squares for error. So we'll have 75.431111 minus the value that we just had in our calculator from before. It works out to be 25.439 repeating. So 25.439 repeating. Okay, so now we have all the values that we need for our ANOVA table. We'll fill in the rest of the table right there on the table. So let's go take these values and get to work on that. Okay, so let's fill in our ANOVA table now. So Looking at our degrees of freedom for treatments, we have to recognize that we had one, two, three different treatments. So take away one from that, we have degrees of freedom two. For the total, if you look at our sample size total, there were 18 data values, right? So take away one, you end up with 17. The difference between two and 17 gives you 15, and that's your degrees of freedom for the error term. Now. For the sum of squares for treatment, we calculated that here, it's 49.991 repeating, so 49.991 repeating. And then for the error term, we have 25.439 repeating, so it's 25.439 repeating. And then we have the sum of squares for total is 75.431, 75.431 repeating. All right, now at that point, we're going to calculate the mean square for treatment. Remember, the way we do this is we divide the sum of squares for treatment by its degrees of freedom. So in that case, we're going to have 49, 49.9911111 divided by 2. 
when we're done, we get 24.995 repeating. So 24.995 repeating. All right, we'll do the same for the MSE, the mean square for error. We're going to take the sum of square for error and divide by 15. So that's going to be 25.439999 divided by 15. When we do that, we get 1.6959 repeating. So 1.6959 repeating. Okay. Now, with that, we're going to calculate our F test statistic. So let's remember that our F test statistic is a ratio of the MST, the mean square for treatment, over the MSE, the mean square for error. So that means we have to divide these two numbers just as you see them. So the error into the MST to get F. The error into MST to get F. All right, so let's do that then. We're going to have 24.995 repeating divided by 1.6959 repeating. When we do that, we get 14.738. 14.738. Okay, so that's quite a large F test statistic. Now, let, to make sure that we are going to um, determine correctly if we reject HO or not, we're going to have to form a critical value, or critical region, sorry, find a critical value and compare this test stat against our critical value. At that point, we'll know for sure whether we should reject HO and support the claim at that point. Okay, so let's go do that. Let's go create our critical region and find our critical value. Okay, so we're dealing with an F statistic, so the critical region will be part of an F curve here. So we'll draw a shaded rejection region on the curve, just as a visual aid. Of course, we're talking about a number line, right, and where the test at walls along the number line. What we want to do is figure out the critical value that would be located here that separates the rejection region from the do not rejection region. So it's going to be an F critical value, and it's going to have the alpha that we have in our problem. So in our problem, we said that the alpha was going to be 5%. So it says our alpha is 5%. So we're going to use 0 0.05 here for alpha. Now, the other thing we have to pay attention to is the degrees of freedom. Remember that F critical values require two degrees of freedom, a degree of freedom that was used in the numerator of the test statistic and the degree of freedom that was used for the denominator of the test statistic. So when we look at our numerator, we see it's MST, and we realize the degrees of freedom there is 2. So we're going to use 2 here. And then for the denominator, we have MSE, and we look at that and realize the degree of freedom there was 15. So we use 15 as a degree of freedom. Okay, so let's go to our F table, the 0.05 table, look up 2 degrees of freedom for the numerator and 15 degrees of freedom for the denominator in order to get our critical value. Okay, so we're on the F.05 table, and we need to find degrees of freedom 2 for the numerator and degrees of freedom 15 for the denominator. And we get the answer 3.68. Okay, so our critical value turns out to be 3.6823. 3.6823. All right, with that critical value, we want to compare that critical value against our F test statistic. So our F test stat was 14.738. That's clearly way into the rejection region. So we're going to say that we reject HO, the null hypothesis, and therefore support HA, our alternative hypothesis. And we look back at our claim, we see that our claim was the same as HA, so we're going to say that we support the claim. So you'll say the sample data, the sample data support the claim. And of course, what's the claim say? It says that one of the brands differs significantly from the other brands, so one of the cocks dries faster than the other one. At least one of the cocks dries faster than the others.